After living in Spain for two years, coming home for the summer has been a culture shock. Getting used to driving again, air conditioning, garbage disposals, dryer machines, gigantic coffee cups, paying tax on top of the shelf price, the variety in all the grocery stores. Add to that the feeling of losing my independence after living alone and you get a recipe for a very difficult adjustment. Historically, when I've come home from college, I end up very sad and unmotivated. And this summer, I'm spending a total of nine weeks at home. So I knew it could go badly and therefore I prepared. As soon as I got home, I was like, no time to waste, chop chop, let's get moving. I unpacked my luggage, first of all, because living out of a suitcase is the absolute worst. And I organized everything, inventoried it, put it where it belongs. I've been waking up here at around 6.30 in the morning, which is just slightly earlier than I would wake up in Segovia. That's mainly because the sun rises here much earlier, and so it's easier to wake up naturally. In Spain, I was seeing a lot of sunrises because it was almost always dark when I woke up. So this is a very nice change. So I do my morning routine, which as you know, has been the same since the beginning of time. I stretch, I take a cold shower, I journal and I plan for the day. And then I have breakfast, which if you're not new to this channel, you know I also have the same breakfast every single day. It's funny the little differences that you notice after you've been living alone and then you come back home. I had to get used to the fact that my dad likes to put the salt on the very top shelf, whereas I like to have it on the kitchen counter because I'm short, but it's okay, I can adapt. After I've had my coffee and worked on the crossword, also on the Wordle, the mini crossword, and the new game they just put out, Connections, I have way too much to do in the mornings now. After all of that, I like to get to work. So there are a lot of things that I wanna do this summer and I'm always most focused in the morning. So I wanna take advantage of that time. So I gather my essentials. In the morning, I usually work on scripting a video or writing a newsletter, just anything that takes a lot of focused thinking. I've also been working on a guide for the music club, which I was communications manager for last year. So I'm like writing a guide for whoever is taking over my job next year. And I'm also currently in the middle of applying for this internship. So those are my morning projects. I'm gonna take a break from working and talk to you instead. I've got a bunch of habits that I'm trying to stick to this summer to stay productive and cheerful. Some of them are new, like going to a coffee shop once a week, practicing French or working in another room of the house. Others are old classics that you'll recognize from other videos, like taking a cold shower, journaling, taking my vitamins or drinking water. Water has always been on my list of habits. I am a water fiend. And that is because when I was in elementary school, elementary school through like middle school, I would get these ocular migraines pretty regularly where basically I would get a blind spot in my vision and then it would grow and grow and my head would hurt and all sorts of not fun stuff. But then once I started drinking water, I, mean, I drank water before, I just never like took it seriously so I never drank enough. They went away. Like I can't remember the last time that I had a migraine, thankfully. So now I always drink one full bottle of water before breakfast. I am known to also carry around my water bottle everywhere. That is why I was super excited to try out the Lark Flip Top water bottle. Thank you lark for sponsoring this video this is the 25 ounce bottle in seaside mint i am nowhere near a seaside right now but at least i can feel like i'm by the ocean first of all the bottle is beautiful i feel like subconsciously when i'm out and about i just want to drink more from it to show it off. The flip up sip straw is also extremely important to me because the majority of my water consumption takes place while I'm working. I literally just have my water bottle in front of me and I'm sip sip sipping hands free like a little gerbil or something. An extra feature that can be bought separately that I love is the Pure Vis bottle cap. This neutralizes up to 99% of contaminants that might be in your water. I don't even have to think about it because it automatically activates every two hours and to charge it, I just plug it into my computer and it lasts for up to a month. As you know, I study in Spain, but my family still lives in the US, so I'm traveling a lot, I'm in a lot of airports, and so it's very important to me to know that my water is always gonna be clean, and also, this keeps your water cold for up to 24 hours, so I know that I can always cool down in the super hot Spanish weather. You can click the link in the description to check out the Lark Flip Top water bottle and also check out all of the other hydration products that they offer. Offered. And my Pomodoro break is definitely over, so I'm gonna get back to work. <sighs> I 
I love lunchtime. Last semester, I mostly had morning classes. So when I came back for lunch at my apartment, that was my time to unwind and recharge my social battery. So I've sort of tried to recreate that here. Um, it's just important to me that I don't rush through lunch to get back to work. So I always schedule more time for lunch in my calendar blocking than I think I'll need. So then I can eat. Um, I might go outside with my brother and pick some black currants because those are in season in our backyard right now or finish up the crossword if I didn't do that in the morning. Sometimes I use that time to answer the daily agape question. So this is a relationship wellness app that me and my boyfriend started using because we are apart for the summer and we were like, there's gotta be an app for that. And there was. So basically every day we answer a question from one of these categories. Today it was, is there anything coming up you would like to prepare for as a couple? What would you like to do? You can't see your partner's response until you've submitted yours. And it's been surprisingly insightful and fun. I am proud to say we have a 52 day streak now. In addition to that, we text every day, we try to call every day. Obviously it's hard because there's a big time zone difference, but we try our best and there's only a month left until we close that distance. In the afternoon, I usually work on something that takes a little less mental energy, like filming a video or editing a video. I've been trying to stay active because I notice my mood correlates so, so much with my activity levels and I've been pretty successful at sticking to it. I think because I've been incorporating a lot of variety and not pressuring myself too much about it, just really trying to have fun with it. Sometimes I'll do like a quick workout video in my room. Um, I really like the Fitness Blender channel if you want recommendations. Sometimes I go to the gym with my family. I've been trying to go on more walks. So overall, just keeping it varied. I am very introverted and I need so much alone time to recharge my batteries. So I'm super grateful that I have a room to myself here to escape to whenever I need. You might have seen on some of my other platforms that I actually decided to paint my room. So half of the walls in here used to be white and half of them were black. And I just painted over everything in like a warm tone of white. So that has helped me feel a lot better in my room. It's a lot brighter now, but something that's still very difficult to adjust to is that I can no longer walk everywhere that I want. I live in an extremely car dependent place, whereas in Segovia, I could walk anywhere. Like I could leave my apartment whenever I wanted because I lived alone. I didn't even have to tell anyone where I was going. The nearest coffee shop was a two minute walk away. If I needed anything from the grocery store, that was just six minutes away. Everything was so easy, but now you need a car to get anywhere and we also share the car so I have to plan and make sure that the car is available for wherever I want to go but I'm still trying to go out and see my friends or go to coffee shops to work instead of always sitting in my room um, to feel that sense of agency over my location. Also something that I've had to get used to, and I don't know if you can relate to this, but when my parents ask me where I'm going or like who I'm having lunch with or how long I'll be there, for some reason that really bothers me because I'm just not used to having to tell anyone where I'm going or what I'm doing or how long I'll be there. And so even though it's a perfectly harmless question and they have the right to know and it's the answer is not something that I'm trying to hide, it's not a secret, it just feels like an intrusion of my privacy, even though it's not. So I have to sort those feelings out within myself and learn how to deal with that. Dinner time. I cook and eat somewhat differently in Spain than I do at home. So one thing I've consciously done is bringing dishes that I often made in Spain, like hand pulled noodles and making them for my family in Wisconsin, which has been a lovely bonding activity and also just makes me feel like I am at home. <laughs> <laughs> I've been reading a lot more, which feels amazing. I've been watching Jeopardy with my family. Also House Hunters, Shark Tank, all my little cute favorite reality shows and game shows. And then when it's time for sleep, I love going to my room and turning the fairy lights on so it's all cozy. I open the window at night for some fresh air and listen to some quiet music while I journal and stretch. 
Getting to a point where you feel like you have two homes can suck because then you feel homesick for both places and that just doubles the emotional pain. But it can also be really nice because you can enjoy being in both of your homes. When I arrived in Wisconsin this summer, I kept thinking, I want to go home. I want to go home. And Spain was the home now. But I've gotten to a point where because of being very intentional about how I spend my time here, I'm actually really excited to spend the rest of my summer here. And I'm also really excited to go to Madrid. Madrid. Like I'm just excited for everything that's coming up and I think that is the best place to be. So the vibes are good. I feel very grateful for the life I'm living and for my two homes.